My front brake has become quite spongy, as you can see here. I think some uh, air got in the brake line when the bike was upside down. Um, so I'm going to show you how I bleed the brake and change the fluid. There's several different methods of changing a brake fluid. Uh, the method I prefer is called the reverse bleed method, whereby you inject uh, fresh brake fluid into the drain. Um, it pushes up the new fluid and any air with it um, into the reservoir, and then um, you just draw off any excess uh, brake fluid from the reservoir. Uh, the big advantage of this method, if you do it right, is it doesn't introduce any air into the system. To change a brake fluid uh, by the reverse bleed method, uh, you need a couple of syringes. Uh, this one with a long hose, I'm going to inject fresh oil, and the short one, I'm going to uh, remove excess oil from the reservoir. Then, obviously, you need some brake fluids. I'm going to be using DOT4. Uh, my brake system is compatible with DOT4 and DOT5.1. Make sure you, you uh, select the right fluid for your system. And then a uh, Torx 20 uh, to remove the reservoir cover. And then an 8mm wrench to uh, loosen off the uh, bleed valve. And the first step is to remove the uh, reservoir cover. So this one's just two bolts, both Torx 20. And you want to keep the uh, reservoir level. So brake fluid doesn't spill over easily. Then carefully remove the cover. When working with brake fluid I recommend using some gloves. Uh, it doesn't do your skin any good so uh, you want to try and keep it off. Um, also the brake fluid can be corrosive uh, so you should try and avoid uh, getting it on uh, anything else. Uh, particularly to paint. Um, the first step is to remove uh, the fluid from the reservoir using one uh, syringe. Okay, next you can uh, remove the rubber cover off the bleed valve. And then uh, that allows you to access the, uh, the bolt. Then you can put your 8mm wrench on the bleed valve. And you want to uh, fill your syringe up with fresh brake fluid. And then put the tube onto the uh, bleed valve. One issue you can have with the reverse bleed method is the tube can pop off while you're injecting fresh brake fluid in. Uh, to prevent that I use a zip tie. So I just put it around the tube and that holds it onto the, uh, the drain valve. One tip I have to get the uh, zip tie tight is you can use some pliers and twist it and just get it snug down. And you see that's held in place nicely. Okay, then before you start injecting uh, the fresh brake fluid, you want to make sure that uh, you get rid of any air from the tube. Um, so hold it upright, and if you see any air, you can tap the tube, and that will um, make it go up into the syringe. So right now I don't see any air in there, so I'm ready to start injecting brake fluid. And uh, obviously you need to open the valve before you start injecting fluid. So I've got my 8mm wrench. I can open the valve, probably about a quarter turn or so, and then uh, start injecting fluid. And just go slowly. If you uh, tr try and force brake fluid in when the valve is still closed, uh, it can pop the tube off, so just be careful. You nearly always get a, uh, a small amount leaking out, so it's a good idea to have a cloth ready. And then when you've done a little bit, you can shut the valve off and check the reservoir. 
when I need to take a break to uh, remove um, brake fluid from the reservoir, I hold the syringe upright using a piece of wire uh, suspending from the uh, triple clamps um, so air doesn't get into the tube. Then once you've injected some fresh brake fluid in, you need to um, empty the reservoir so it doesn't overflow. Then you're ready to inject some more fresh brake fluid. And then you just keep re uh, repeating this process, injecting fresh brake fluid uh, into the drain, removing um, the old stuff from the reservoir until uh, all the fluid is changed. Then you can test a brake and make sure it engages correctly and it doesn't feel spongy. So that feels much, much better. Then once you put enough new brake fluid through the system, you can tighten the bleed valve and uh, remove the hose. Then replace the dust cap. Then using brake cleaner you can remove any brake fluid. Then before you put the reservoir cover back on you want to make sure the level is set correctly. And I just use some calipers, uh, in this case it's set to 5mm uh, just to check it's correct. Um, there's also a, a line on the inside of the reservoir which you can easily check. You want to make sure it's level though when you're checking it. And you also want to clean off any excess uh, brake fluid that's uh, spilled over. Make sure the sealing surface is nice and clean. Now you're ready to put the cap back on. Uh, make sure the rubber diaphragm is uh, positioned correctly and it isn't extended. Then you can use some brake cleaner to remove any brake fluid that leaked out. Then before you ride the bike, make sure the brake operates correctly. And that feels so much better than before.